What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today, Metal Wolf Chaos XD. In order to properly talk about this game, we first need to dig into its past, because this is a project with a very peculiar backstory to it. For many, many years, this was considered to be one of the very rarest games in the entire world. I mean, trying to track down a copy on a place like eBay would often run you hundreds and hundreds of dollars, because this is technically a remaster of a game that was only released in Japan on the original Xbox. This was actually made as an experimental little thing by Microsoft and From Software, the creators of Dark Souls. The idea behind it was that if they made a super silly and super awesome mech game, perhaps it would get Japanese attention and finally sell some consoles over there. And obviously it didn't work. This was a huge failure. They didn't sell very many, and especially they didn't sell many Xboxes. And so it became sort of a thing of legend. It became one of those holy grail items that every game collector tried to track down like The Misadventures of Tronbon back on PlayStation, or Skies of Arcadia on Dreamcast. It was one of those projects that just never had a price drop and became increasingly difficult to really get your hands on. And now, thankfully, we have a freaking remaster of it. And now we all have a chance to play this thing for a reasonable price, and honestly, I think that it cleans up very, very well. Now, the biggest thing about this is that sometimes there are games that are re-released or remade that don't age particularly great, where there's just certain aiming styles and gameplay mechanics that did not work as well 10 years ago, and now they look a little bit dated. This is not at all the case. I mean, if I hadn't told you that this was a remaster, you probably wouldn't notice. Metal Wolf Chaos controls superbly, allowing you to pilot this mech and blow up helicopters and save different civilians instantaneously. I mean, the tutorial of this game is about 90 seconds long. It basically says, here's how you shoot your guns, here's how you switch your guns, have fun. This is the ultimate throw you in the deep end and see if you can swim style experience. But the biggest aspect of it is not just the fact that it's really, really gleeful and crazy to just go out here and blow stuff up, it's the fact that this probably has one of the most insane stories of any video game I have ever seen in my life. We are playing as the President of the United States after it's been taken over by a bunch of revolutionary soldiers. It's not exactly clear why they decided to overthrow America or how they managed to do it, but let's face it, that's not important. Basically, they have managed to destroy freedom, and now only the President can bring it back. Yes, this really is the story, and it seems like the way the President is going to do this is that secretly, he had a mech built called Metal Wolf, and now you get to fly literally just fly all over America fighting off these enemy soldiers. Now, this game was obviously made for Japanese audiences, so the English lines are a little bit weird. The voice actors are doing the best they can, but they definitely repeat sentences in ways, and there is some weird audio to it. You can tell that this is one of those games that was made to be voice acted in English so people in Japan could understand it, and now when you just hear it in America, it's a little bit odd. People being like, we must destroy this base to destroy the base, so when the base is destroyed, we'll be able to get out of this base because it'll be destroyed. And it's a little bit weird to try and adapt to, but let's face it, the funniest thing about this is that each of the different missions takes place in a different city across the United States. You can be in, like, uh, San Francisco or the Grand Canyon or in Washington, D.C. And funny enough, a lot of the signs and stuff are still written in Japanese. It's very clearly, this was made by people who had never actually seen the US. They'd watched movies and googled some photographs and made a game on it. But really, that's part of the charm. There is such a strangeness to this. It really feels like a bunch of aliens tried to go down and create a video game about what it's like to fight in war, and it's just so surreal. So let's talk about the combat. Basically, everything here is ultra, ultra easy to understand. You're a giant mech, right? Well, there's people running around on the ground that you're going to be blowing up, and lots of different like things like helicopters and tanks and super weapons. But for the most part, there is 
very little mech-on-mech -mech combat. Most of the people you're fighting are just these random dudes. The main battle you're having, in my opinion, is conservation. Keeping up your resources because these missions can be pretty long and you need to destroy everything. Metal Wolf is very, very heavily armored, which means that you're pretty much immune to most of the shots that are going to be hitting your different barriers. The only way to win, though, is to essentially wipe out the entire city that you land in. Every enemy base, every enemy tower, every enemy truck basically needs to be completely leveled in order to progress. And so, the biggest thing is that you, before it starts, get a chance to equip the different weaponry you want. Your sniper rifles, your assault rifles, your rocket launchers, and each one certainly has a designed purpose. For a random example, say there's a time when you're just trying to stalk through the streets and there's a bunch of very, very weak guys. You could use this shotgun to try and level them very, very quickly, but in almost every case, you need to try and use the weaker weapons on weaker enemies to conserve your very limited ammo. I mean, a lot of times I would actually find myself trying to duck behind buildings and very quickly weapon swap just to make sure I never wasted a single bullet, because it really does come down to it. There are also cool times where you have to use your rocket launchers to blow up a building, and during this, you really get a chance to acknowledge the fact that this is a game that was so far ahead of its time. I mean, look at these explosions, look at these destructible environments. This game was made almost 15 years ago, and it looks perfect on modern hardware. But this does bring me to something that I do think is a little bit of an issue, which is that at times there are some glitches, there are some errors and stuff. Maybe it's just the way the game arrives originally worked, because it doesn't seem like the game is freaking out, it just seems like it's part of perhaps the design. Now one of the biggest things is, you when you're playing this, need to keep your television remote near you. This is something that you cannot play with headphones, and I'm being dead serious about that. When you play this game, the audio is completely out of whack, I mean it is crazy pants. Sometimes there will be people that are whispering and it's super super quiet, only for them to be shouting the next second, and it makes just trying to play this game at a normal typical volume practically impossible. Like one of the things that's just always full blast is these really really goofy cutscenes. These are like, um, they're very very satirical news reports that show like, this is DNN, the news network. It's super goofy, I really appreciate how funny this game is, but it's always extremely high volume. I mean, it kind of got to the point where as I was beating each mission, I would run, grab the remote, and turn the volume down to like one just to make sure that it wouldn't blow out my TV speakers. I hate that it does that. Now getting back into the gameplay itself, the missions are all about 20 minutes long of you trying to mow down different enemies and wipe out these bases to stop the, uh, the constant flow of enemies. The bad guys are just going to be perpetually pouring out of these different buildings and stuff or their trucks, and so you need to try and systematically dismantle them in order to stop this onslaught before you run out of ammo. It's kind of a struggle, but there is an additional focus of this, which is trying to rescue survivors. The American people don't want to be part of this evil regime, so you need to actually go out there and find these different cages that have civilians in them. This will give you more supporters, but additionally it gives you a chance to save the different scientists. You can dedicate your different researchers and funds towards developing better weapons and new items, that way you have a little bit more resources in the the following missions. It basically makes it where the more dedicated you are to exploring or rocket jumping outside the normal bounds of the area, you'll probably have an easier time in the future, and some of these missions are pretty tough. Since this is an early 2000s game, they don't mind trying to kill you. They don't mind basically throwing impossible things in your path occasionally and killing you and giving you a game over, because that's just kind of the way people did games back in the day. A lot of missions I honestly had to play twice. The first time I'd sort of try and rush in there and learn the map and learn the enemies and learn what I'm up against and then eventually die, only to restart now with a mental map to be properly prepared for what's coming next. This game is 
tough, and I like that about that. I do think that I do consider it a flaw, the fact that there is so much trial and error in this. Occasionally, it sucks when I played to the absolute best of my ability, I managed to dodge a bunch of attacks, but I simply ran out of ammunition because I got lost in a giant sweeping landscape. It kind of sucks when you lose even though you did great. It's one of those games that certainly makes you feel like you're being punished even when you're doing the correct thing, which at times can be a little bit irksome. Overall, I'd definitely say that I had a very surprisingly good time with this. It's old school fun. It's certainly not going to be the most cutting edge advanced thing ever, but seeing this really, really weird story in such a great hit gym brought to modern consoles for 25 bucks, in my opinion, is a great deal. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Metal Wolf Chaos XD an 8 out of 10. As I make this video, it's just important to keep in mind that currently, you can only buy this game on the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and PC. And it's a little bit of a shame that this isn't on Switch, because I think that the missions would be very, very fun on a handheld, and honestly, I feel like graphically it's not super intensive, so it should probably run there absolutely perfect. Thanks so much for watching this review, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming of Giant Dark Souls Max. Bow, bow, bow. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.